Hey guys, Zor here. Welcome back to The Great Ace Attorney Adventures. Last time we kicked things off with the second part of this trial after the whole smoke grenade incident and met up with Gina Lestrade, our new fifth passenger that was hiding underneath the cabinet. Well, we think. Um, Von Zeeks has brought up some really interesting points of something has been tampered with, and honestly, I agree from what I can barely recall from the last time I played that. And right now, we're just kind of at a standstill between guilty and not guilty. But something is very fishy. And that's beside the point, because now it is time to cross-examine Gina. Yes, my lord. What just happened? The whole balance of the trial just shifted almost beyond recognition. The Reaper of the ba Bailey is at work, it would seem. Alright, so what exactly? Alright, she already did her, uh, testimony. Uh, right around the waist of time, I got nothing to show for me troubles. Uh... I'll press these last three statements to see how that goes. So you can see outside into- er, you can see out into the cabin at all? Not a jaunt. Most days I push the cushion up with me head and look- look at the cr crack. Then I can have butchers at who's I'm gonna fiddle. I thought you were a pickpocket, not a butcher. I mean, I can have a look. The seat I get under ain't as plush as the other one- as the other one, see? So most of the time, the passengers plant themselves opposite. But for some reason that night, this year Irishman spent the whole journey right over me, Ed. And for that reason, you weren't able to push the cushion up to peek out. I see. Truth is, I ain't too happy in small dark places. Feels too much like being thrown into the clink. But it's the only place to hide in these carriages, so it's... Obson's choice? Mata! That is a... That is an idiom that I am not familiar with. Why doesn't she just stick to picking people's pockets in the open, then? I say there's some reason that she's not letting on, judging from her demeanor. So, anyways, I was a bit scared. But I just... Uh, I had to just stick it out under there, nothing else for it. Oh, you're not smiling anymore. I mean, you kind of are, but whatever. Bang. When you say a loud bang, do you mean the noise of someone falling to the floor? Could have been, I suppose. I don't remember so well. Point is, it made me jump. And you let out a scream. Involuntarily? That's right. And I felt the cushion over me head get lighter all of a sudden. Presumably when the defendant got up in order to help the victim, yes? Or not. It could equally, equally have been the moment that the accused stand up in order to stab his victim. Could it not? Well, girl? Did you see what happened at that crucial moment? Yeah, I saw it. I pushed up the cushions and had a quick butchers while, while I had the chance, didn't I? The Irishman was sitting up the bloke what what have what have fallen on the floor on the seat opposite. That matches Mr. McGill's account, of course. But then the fella suddenly turned around and looks right at me! I snuck back down again, but it was too late by then. I should never have risked looking. Because of that, yeah. And when Mr. McGilda discovered you, he pulled you up from out of your hiding place? I was scared stiff, I was. He dragged me out and sat me down on the seat and all. Next to the victim, Mr. Mason? Yeah. The bloke had a knife in its guts. He was... still bleeding. Then the carriage lurched a bit, and he ended up falling onto me. 
Ugh. How horrible. Awful. I'm making up words on the fly. Don't mind me. Both me, both me and's got blood, er, got covered in blood. Maybe feel sick like as a dog. Both her hands covered in blood? That must be what the rooftop passenger saw. After that, I believe you talked with Mr. McGilty for a while. Is that correct? He asked me some stuff. Wanted to know me name and what I was up to on that. Then I heard something from up, up, up above. Someone screamed. Yes, Mr. First on the roof deck. One would presume. Well, I didn't want no one seeing me face, so I didn't look up. Then the horses were drawn up smartish, and this ear Irishman said to me, Get back under the seat. I'll see that you can get away later. Hmm. All six members of the jury have decided the defendant was innocent. For one brief shiny moment, yes. It's clear that they are still or they're all still very unsure. If we could just find some conclusive piece of evidence among this new testimony, I'm sure we would clinch the vic the verdict we want. Yes, I think you're right. I have this niggling feeling. Something's bothering me. But I just can't quite put my finger on it. Uh, I have to find a piece of testimony? I mean, I guess... But... Like... I'm so confused. So, you were already in the omnibus before it even set off on this run? Well, yeah. I mean, what's the point of spending a joey to make a few bob, eh? That's a rum idea, isn't it? I suppose she means there's no point spending money to make money. It actually makes sense. Council, may I remind you that this girl's a petty thief? Kindly refrain from enter ent entertaining her to nets. Well, that does clear up the little mystery of the fares and all. Four paying passengers and five pence apiece, making the twenty to which the cabman testified. And one little scape, uh, scap, scape grace riding for free. The red conk of a driver always goes for some grub before his last rung, you see. That's when I slip into the carriage and get myself in under the seat. Nice and easy, right? But your hiding place is a storage compartment. Full of equipment for the coach. No? Yeah, there's bushes and buckets and whatnot in there, sure. I always chuck all that out and cram in the corner somewhere. No one ever seems to bother much. And yet, according to the report filed by the police officer who first arrived at the scene, the compartment was full of such paraphernalia. Well, I don't know nothing about that. Like I said, I moved all that stuff out so I could hide under the seat. That's all I could tell you. Hmm. It seems we've reached the end of that line of inquiry. Continue. Why am I not getting anything useful? Hold it! A waste of time? Why is that? Well, most nights I'm on my own in the god permit at least some of the time. Also, it's really weird. I can actually switch over to him. Although he's not really reacting to anything. I... I beg your pardon? Did you say God Permit? Oh yeah. Well, that's what my kind call it. You'd say the Omnibus, I suppose. Oh! God's Permit! Like a literal permit! I get it! The point is, any normal run, the carriage ain't got no one in it for a while. And that's when you come off your hiding place and get away. And that's it. Only that night. This cove was sat on me seat from the start. He didn't budge the whole way, did he? Not one inch! I was totally stuck. Do you mean to tell us that you were present in the carriage for the duration? You were under the seat the entire time while events unfold in the enclosed cabin? Yeah? Yeah, right, mister? 
to be sure, to be sure. I was as shocked as anyone. You don't expect to lift the cushion you've been sat on and find a child now, do you? Hmm. So this Miss Lestrade couldn't possibly be the culprit then. I am a confused child. Didn't I press all of it? So you can see out into the cabin at all? Not a jot. Must say it's a yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is who I'm gonna fiddle. I. I am a confused child. I'm just. <laughs> what? Know. You! Hello! What do you want? Excuse me. Is something wrong, Mr. McGilded? Oh, I do apologize. Was there something the matter, Consul? I'm just wondering if Miss Lestrade's last comment made something occur to you, perhaps. You seem to be thinking something to yourself. Oh, no, no, no. It was nothing important. Oh, I was feeling bad for the poor lasses all. I remember feeling desperate myself as a young lad, shut up in the dark. It was terrifying, so it was. I see. Yes, I'm sure we can all sympathi sympathize. I'm still scared of the dark now. I and I don't know about yourself, but I find that the darkness seems to make everything you hear seem that much louder as well. Yeah... I... I suppose it does. Maybe. Miss Lestrade! Did you hear something that night? Anything? An unusual pr noise, perhaps? Nah. Not really. All I could hear was the Irishman snoring. Jabbers! There's no need to tell the whole world of me foibles, you little scamp! What a pity. If only Miss Lestrade had heard something. It might have given us a, new, a vital new clue. Yes. What should we make of that last statement of hers? Uh, I actually think... I'm gonna say it's important. Because I am grasping at straws here. My lord! I believe the statement just made by the witness is profoundly important. Profoundly important? But, but all she said was that she heard nothing. Yes, which is the profoundly important part. I'm almost sure of it. Hmm. I'm almost sure I don't understand the inner workings of your Eastern mind, Consul. Nevertheless. Miss Gina Lestrade. You will supplement your formal testimony by repeating the last statement, please. What? Supplement? What do you want about? Don't give me all your fancy talk. I know what you're trying to do. It won't work on me. That's right. Insult the judge. Always a good move. I was straining my ears to work out what's going on. Rocky ear was snoring. Wait. You didn't hear anything else? So you were straining to hear what was happening the entire time, since the moment you hid yourself? Um, not exactly, no. Sorry? Well, there was no one in the cabin to starve with. I could just push up the cushion and have the butchers to see what was what. But then, when I saw the swell getting on, I got me head down so he didn't notice me. And Mr. McGill has sat on the seat under which you were hiding, correct? Yeah! What- Hill <laughs> his face. Would you Adam and Eve a day? What a mug! So then all I could do was listen. I was waiting to jump out of there as soon as I heard him leave, you see? But would he? Not likely. Even though we stopped here and there, I never heard the door open. So I just had to stay put and listen to, to him driving his bigs to market. Snoring like an old dog he was. 
Hmm. Are there any conclusions we can draw from that, I wonder? She didn't hear the door open. Oh, she didn't hear the door open! Miss Lestrade, what you have just told the court is clearly at odds with the facts. At odds? Are, are you sure, man? Absolutely. It seems my learned Nipponese friend is not as dull-witted as I fear. So Von Zeke's realized it too. Counsel! I must insist that you bolster your claim with evidence, or some complicit party's name at the very least. Yes, my lord! I expect you to demonstrate this alleged contradiction to the court. According to Miss Lestrade, while she was hiding in the omnibus that night, she heard nothing but the sound of Mr. McGilda's snoring. But think, Ryunosuke, think! Or just double slap your face! There's something else she should have heard. A uh, person. Very well, my lord. Allow me to elaborate. On a particular sound that Miss Lestrade could not have failed to hear on the night in question. Sound very clearly explained by the presence of the following person. M <laughs> Mr. Lord Von Zeeks. No. It's, uh... So right now, from what they were saying, um... Mr. McGilda was the first passenger? So when would Mason have gotten in? Mason had to have come in at some point. Thrice fired Mason? Yes, my lord. The sound that Miss Lestrade cannot have failed her here? Is that of the victim, Mr. Mason, boarding, boarding the omnibus? Order! Order! Explain your reasoning, counsel. Miss Lestrade. Allow me to confirm something. You claimed earlier that you were the first person on board the omnibus. Is that correct? Yeah, of course I was. I got on while, dri while the driver was in the pub, didn't I? And? The next person to board the omnibus was Mr. McGilded? That it was. Not a soul was in the cabin when I climbed aboard. At least not in plain sight. So you were, to all intents and purposes, alone in the enclosed cabin of the omnibus at that time. Did I not just say as much? I wasn't traveling with anyone else if that's what you mean. Yeah, I saw him get on, remember? Through the crack under the seat cushion. He was on his own for sure. And for what we heard, the carriage made a number of stops after that on its onward journey. During which time, did you not hear the door opening or closing at all? Nah, I never heard it. That's exactly what I was listening for, weren't it? Waiting for the swell to leave. In which case, when and how did the victim end up in the carriage? We know that the victim collapsed inside the enclosed cabin of the omnibus. Therefore, Miss the street statement about what she did or did not hear is at odds with the facts. Yes, this petty thief's statement was clearly flawed. Lord Von Zeeks! Yes, he knew. He knew all too well there was an inconsistency in Mrs. Strait's statement. <laughs> it would seem words of thanks are in order for my learned friend. What are you talking about? You have demonstrated matters impeccably. This witness and her colorful statements are entirely unreliable. Her words are convenient untruths, nothing more. Oh, there's panic among the jury. There's panic among the jury. Stop it. Uh-oh. 
Oh, old lady, wait, we can talk about this. Old lady, wait, we can talk about this! Uh-oh. She... she didn't even say anything! I didn't want to judge the little dear mite just because she had some rather naughty ways. But I must say... I can't abide liars. And neither can I. M mr Foreman! I didn't want to judge the girl just because she had some less than salubrious ways. But I must say, I cannot abide liars. Please do not hit six again! Mr. Naruto! That's five jury mem members leading towards guilty! Well, your consideration for others is refreshing, my Nipponese friend. To the considerable troubles you have spared me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I took a swig of water at the same time he took a drink of grape juice. Oh, God. I hate it here. I want to go home. Yes. Very refreshing. I can't keep a straight face right now. <laughs> and there he goes. Gah! What are you playing at? Have you forgotten who you're working for, you useless Eastern Adaman? This is carnage. It's perfect. Turn number two is the only one left. Mr. Naruto, the way this is going. I know. We can't find some new way to convince everyone of Mr. McGilda's innocence. The judge will rule, and we have we'll have lost. I very much want to believe the words of one of London's most respect respected gentlemen. But those of us in service know we must accept hard truths. Yes, the witness's last statement seems to have revealed a critical inconsistency in her story. However... If we consider the possibility that her statement is in fact the truth... It may shed an entirely new light on this whole case! What are you saying? Counsel? I'm... sorry, sir? Whatever do you mean? Counsel, I will not tolerate you attempting to peruse my uh, ad adju adjudication? Adjudication, adjudication, adjudication. Explain yourself at once. When the accused board the omnibus on the night in question, the victim was nowhere to be seen. Subsequently, the carriage door was not heard opening a single time, as testified by the witness in the stand. And yet, the victim's body was found inside the carriage. If this petty, petty thief's words are to be believed, how do you explain the victim's miraculous appearance inside the cabin of the omnibus? There's only one way to explain how the victim came to be inside the carriage. He wasn't already there, because Gina would have seen him. He was put in there after he died. Which... Eh? I'm gonna say in our entrance. Please don't take my badge away. Oh, thank god. If the door wasn't opened even once, the only explanation is that this victim and the enclosed cabin some other way! Objection! I wondered what new fantasy you would come up with in your blind panic. But behold, the omnibus is here for all to see. 
Only one side of the enclosed cabin is furnished with a door. The other has only windows. Fixed windows, which cannot possibly open. In short, there is no entrance to the cabin other than the door. Objection. But there could be. There's one possible possibility you haven't considered. Oh, really? Yes. One other way inside that isn't the door. Another opening, the use of which allowed the victim to appear inside the enclosed cabin. Can I actually check that? All right, console. The fence will identify the location for the court. Here's the omnibus of which the incident occurred. I'm gonna check this before I get, um, solidify that. I'm assuming they might be talking about this window. But can you even open it? Oh wait, hang on, I see it. You can certainly see inside the carriage through this, yeah, yeah. That's not good for us. No wait, there is a latch. Why won't you let me investigate the latch? Come on! The latch! Okay, whatever. The fact that that latch exists there at all does confirm theory. Where on earth is his entrance by which you propose the victim enter the cabin? This, right here. Point. Right? Oh, thank god. The answer is obvious! It could have only been the skylight! I say! The skylight? Objection! Your ludicrous proposal almost had me lost for words. However... Objection! The skylight may well be large enough for someone to pass through. Objection! So you claim. But do you have a shred of, of evidence to support your adult brain theory? Both Mr. McGill and Miss Lestrade said the same thing in their testimonies. They each claim to have heard a loud thud, such as the noise made by someone falling to the floor. Yes. Which has already been explained. As the sound of the victim falling from his seat having been assaulted with a dagger. Yes, it has, but... Would a man slipping from the seat onto the floor really have made such a loud noise as the witnesses described? A noise loud enough to cause Miss Lestrade to let out an involuntary cry, in fact. Good, good gracious! Perhaps, in fact... That the moment that the victim made his entrance, that was the moment the victim made his entrance into the cabin. No, let me rephrase that. The victim didn't enter the cabin as such. He fell into it. Objection. You're now suggesting that the victim fell from the skylight into the cabin? That's simply impossible. How can you be so sure? Because if the victim had fallen inside through the skylight, as you say, the passengers on the roof deck would have seen it happen. And yet, not one person made mention of such events in their testimony. Well, um, yes, that's true, but... Uh-oh. Might the humble fellow make a wee comment here? Mr. Mr. McGilded? To be sure now, the two fellas who were sat on the roof that testified afore said nothing of the victim falling through the skylight. But, it seems to me, my lord, that tis not so much a case of them not saying, but... I. This is a case of them being unable to say. What? I think perhaps the two fellas do be having something of a compelling reason not to mention what happened. Would you not agree, 
fine ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Oh my. My goodness. Surely not. Those two chaps on the roof? You mean, the one who stuck that knife in the man were... Hi guys, I forgot you were here! Just, what exactly are you insinuating here, you... you blitterer? You rotter, he said! You rotter! What are you insinuating? This is a flaming outrage! I have a good mind to give you a blinker in a minute! He'll give you a shiner in a minute, he said, and so will I! Mr. Fairplay! You're effectively accusing me! A city gentleman and well-respected banker! And me, a... a very angry hatter! Suggestion, suggesting that someone like me could have stabbed that man in the guts, it's... It's... It's a disgrace! It's scandalous! It's... Ah! I protest! I protest in the strongest possible terms! That... Where the fuck did you come from? <laughs> That's right! I protest too! About you, you rotten scoundrel! Order! 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 This is not the time, witnesses! I will not permit this wanton invasion of the stand. Return to the anteroom at once. But... But this is beyond reason, my lord! Ah, uh, it's outrageous! It's... It's very hurtful, you know? My lord. If I may comment. Go ahead, Lord Von Zeeks. It was the defense that insinuated this outburst from the witnesses. My learned friend has seen fit to abandon all protocol and accuse the witnesses without proof. A accuse? I I never intended to. It seems, young Nipponese, that your command of the English tongue is wanting. You proposed to this court that the victim fell through the skylight from the roof deck of the omnibus. That hypothesis cannot possibly stand without the rooftop passengers being aware of the events. You have been brand you have branded these gentlemen liars. You have intimid intimated their criminal guilt. In our British courts of law, that is what it that is what a that is what is termed a baseless accusation. I know I was rash to put the idea forward without any actual evidence, but you can't just dismiss it without a second thought. What are we wasting time for? Get them to uh, testify. I thought there was something fishy about that hat from the moment I laid eyes on the fella. We have to see this matter through now, one way or another. If there's filth and rubbish in our mist, we must dispose of it at once. Well, this is not good. What? What's happening, Mr. Naruhoto? The spectators in the public gallery are... They're in a complete frenzy! Mr. Fairplay, and Mr. First. Um, m my lord? You... you will take the stand again and make another formal testimony. In reference to the indic indic indictment brought by the defense. Um, y yes m my lord. I... I didn't come here for this. There's no time to think this through. All I can do is keep pushing forward. But not now. We'll push forward in the next episode. That was a little kind of scary with the crowd chanting like that. But whatever. I think we're making progress. I hope we're making progress. I don't know how long this trial is supposed to stand for, man. 
With that said, this is Zora signing out. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Preferably with me not drinking at the same time as Von Zeke's.